So we need to graph piecewise functions. And in this video, I wanna cover a easy example as well as a hard example. Now again, the terms easy and hard, it's all going to be relative. But the way that I look at this is typically a easy problem is something that I would start off with the class or when students are struggling, I wanna make sure that they can at least understand this basic problem. Whereas a hard example is more likely something you'd probably see on a test. Remember where your teacher never teaches it. It shows up on a test, it shows up on a quiz. It goes over the same basic elements from the easy, but it has a couple little twists that students need to pay attention to to make sure that they really understand how to graph piecewise functions. Okay, so in this example, we have f of x is equal to, and we have two functions with restrictions. So we have the first function is 2x minus one, where x is greater than zero, and then we have a negative x plus one, where x is going to be less than zero. So remember, a piecewise function is just a combination of two or more functions with domain restrictions, because we can't graph these two lines together on the same x, y axis, because then it wouldn't be a function f of x, right? It wouldn't pass the vertical line test. So. What we're going to do is we're going to graph these independently with their domain restrictions. So they're going to be on an x, y axis. And the reason why I chose two linear equations as the easy, because most students at a level of graphing piecewise functions should remember and know how to graph a linear equation. But if you forgot, we'll kind of work through it step by step. All right. So in this first example, we have two thirds x minus one, and just remember y equals mx plus b, right? So two thirds represents the slope, and the negative one is gonna represent the y-intercept. Now, before we get into graphing, we need to understand what this domain restriction represents. This is saying all x values greater than zero. So what that means is this equation is only going to be true for the function f of x for x values that are greater than zero. So if I'm taking this graph, I'm only gonna to wanna to graph it to the positive version of the x axis, because we're only looking for x values when it is going to be positive. So let's go ahead and find our y intercept, which is a negative one. Now I'm gonna do a open circle first, and if that value is included on the domain restriction, then I would fill it in. Well, in this case, you can see is x is greater than zero, not x is greater than or equal to. So I'm gonna leave this open, and then I'm going to follow the slope though to the right, because that's for the positive values of x. So again, the slope here is two over three. Think again, rise over run. So I can go up two over three, one, two, three. That is gonna be my next point. I could continue that process if I wanted to, but we know that is going to continue on indefinitely over to up and to the right. Now let's go and take a look at the next one. The next one I have negative x plus one. And just remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a negative as your slope, you can rewrite that as negative one. But if you wanna think about that in terms of rise over one, you could do negative one over one, or you could do a positive one over negative one, but do not do a negative one over negative one, right? Because negative over negative is a positive. We don't wanna do that, so just pick. Do you want the top to be negative or do you want the bottom to be negative? And in this case, I am going to go, I'll do down or I'll do up. Well, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I'll do this first one. So the rise over the run. Actually, never mind. I don't want to go to the right, right? Because this is x is less than zero. So let's first find the y-intercept, which is going to be a positive one. So I'll do a nice little open circle. Now, again, I want to do my a rise over run. So I want my run to be going to the left because I only want to graph it to this level because that's when the x values are going to be negative, right? If you think about the x-axis. So let's do it where my run is going to be negative. So I could go up one to the left one. That would be my next point. And you can see my graph would look like this. Now, again, to verify, do you guys see how this passes the vertical line test? For every vertical line, I'm only gonna cross the graph once. But if I was to extend these lines, I would they would crisscross, right? And they would ultimately fail the vertical line test. Now, I didn't say I was gonna identify the domain and the range, but a lot of times with graphing piecewise functions, that's something really, really important. So if we look at the domain, the domain is a set of all x values that makes up this graph. And you can see, as we have a little person walking from left to right, every single, point on this graph is defined except for at zero. When x equals zero, you can see this graph is undefined as well as this graph is undefined. But if you were to walk along this graph, you'd be an undefined value, jump down to this graph, and then you continue on for everything. So this domain would be from negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. If we look at the range, the range is the set of all y values that make up this graph. And you can see there's nothing below negative one. But once we get to negative one, it's undefined, but anything above negative one is defined. And you might say, well, Mr. McLogan, one is not defined. You're right, one is not defined on this function, or the y value one is not defined in this function. However, you can see over here, one is defined, or the y value of one is defined on that function. So in this case, my range is going to be from negative one to positive infinity. All right, let's go and look at the hard function. Okay, 
So in this function, we have a different name, right? It's a different function. And this one is called g of x, like George or Gabriella. And we have three equations. So three equations is a little bit of a twist, but again, that's fine as long as we have our three different restrictions. And in this case, we have a absolute value, we have another linear equation, and then we have a quadratic. So again, all functions that we should be familiar with when we get to the part of graphing piecewise functions, but a lot of times people forget things and that's why it gets them confused. They remember linear equations so well, and then we get to something like this and sometimes everything we know just goes out the window. So just like we did over here, I'm gonna go ahead and create a x, y axis. All right, now in this case, when I'm dealing with three restrictions, or if I'm dealing with a restriction that's not on the y-axis, see how this restriction is on the y-axis. One was to the left, one was to the right. In here, you can see we have some different restrictions. We have negative two and one. So what I'm actually going to do in this case is I'm actually gonna draw a vertical line. Now these are not asymptotes. So you don't probably wanna leave these on the final graph because then your teacher might think you're graphing asymptotes and that would be completely wrong. I'm gonna do this just for instructional purposes so you can see, but again, we can always erase them at the end. So I'm gonna go at negative two and at one. These are gonna be your value. And basically the reason why I'm doing this is I'm breaking up this graph into three kind of quadrants. We have this one, this one, and this one. So the furthest left one, this is for x values that are less than negative two. What is our function? Our function is two times x plus two. Now, if you remember, that's the V-shaped graph. And there's something really important about the V-shaped graph. The V-shaped graph, absolute value of x looks like this, right? And what's important about this is to find these points going left and right, you go over one, up one, over two, up two, right? So it keeps that linear graph going to the right and linear to the left. So if I have a coefficient of two, all that's basically doing is steepening my graph. So if I have a two absolute value of x, if I go over one, now my output though is going to be a two. And so you can see, what that's doing is that's vertically stretching the graph, all right? So it's really important to just kind of remember those little details. And then also, if I'm adding a two inside the function, that's gonna be shifting the graph two units to the left, which obviously is gonna make sense because that's my dividing line. So I have my V-shaped graph is being shifted two units to the left and it's being multiplied by two. Now again, this is for x values that are less than negative two. So I'm only gonna be graphing to the left of there. At negative two, it's less than, so that's gonna be a open circle. And again, remember, it's not over one, up one, it's gonna be over one, up two. So it's gonna be a little bit of a steeper line going right there. Now the next one is one. And I don't know why this confuses students. They kind of like totally forget their, or their algebra one. But remember, all these functions, guys, you can set them equal to y. Y is equal to one. Well, how do we graph that, right? There's no slope. Our slope is actually equal to zero. And so this is just going to be your y-intercept. It's just a horizontal line. It doesn't matter what x is, you're always going to have a horizontal line. Whoosh, looks like that. But again, this is only gonna be defined between negative two and positive one. It's only defined between these two dotted lines. So at negative two, my one right here, well, you know what, I kind of graphed that bad. Let's make this a little bit more steeper, just so I have a little bit more room. Make this a little bit more cuter. So let's do that right there. Okay, so at one, again, I always start with an open circle first. So at negative two, we have the value one. But again, that's less than or x is less than or equal to, so therefore that is actually going to be defined. And that's gonna be true all the way over to here. And again, we'll have a nice closed circle. All right, the last one for x values that are greater than one, I have a negative x minus one. And again, we just need to remember, what do these graphs look like? Well, the quadratic equation is our U-shaped graph, right? We have our V-shaped graph and our U-shaped graph. The difference here is instead of multiplying by two, which would be a vertical stretch, now we're multiplying by a negative, which is, remember, a reflection about the x-axis. So instead of this graph opening up, it's now gonna be opening down. And then also we see this X minus one, that is going to be shifting in the graph one unit to the right. So again, remembering our transformations. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a open circle because it's X values that are greater than one. So we'll go greater than one, and then we could say the graph would look something like that. Now again, I will erase these, and there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is an example of a easy as well as a hard piecewise function.